You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. I'm Katrina, and I love anime. I'm Steven, and I'm aware of anime. But what if that affection could rub off? Perhaps that excitement in her eyes got me curious. I could offer up some solid anime. I could give them a watch, just to see what all the fuss is about. And maybe, just maybe... I could learn to love anime, too. Welcome to Inspired by a Weeaboo. Hello, and welcome back to Inspired by a Weeaboo. I am your host, Katrina, and with me is my husband, Steven. Hello. We just finished episode three of Full Metal Alchemist. So, Steven, what did you think? I was really surprised that they put this episode so early because this seems like one of those episodes they would save for much later on to kind of keep you wondering and guessing, but I appreciate them putting it up front because we got an introduction to them in the first two, just Mm -hmm. kind of understanding what their mission was, and then they said, okay, now let's really give you their backstory at least two not like a complete degree, but we understand their mission, like why they are on this path right now, like what actually happened with their mom. Yes. And I noticed very clearly mm-hmm. they did not show their father at all. They were hiding his face. <laughs> they did not mention him. Well, they the one guy did say his name. Ho, what was it? Hohenheim. Hohenheim. Which you did say last yes. time, but they're they're being very obstructive with his face, so I'm assuming we're going to see him and not know it. I mean, I feel like you're going to know it as soon as you see him because Edward seriously freaking looks like him. You know, he doesn't look like Edward in the boyish sense, but you're going to see him and go, okay, yeah, that's Hohenheim. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I think it's just a, they were kind of playing with it of, you know, you can't really see his face, but I also feel like it's kind of alluding to the fact that that's how Edward and Al see him. They don't see his face. They can't remember him. They see flashes and silhouettes, but it's never his entire face. Mm -hmm. So So, nothing, nothing to obscure his identity for no. for later purposes, which, I mean, that does make sense because that was the one point that Ed made a lot is that he's never home, he's never there. And hopefully to God they explain that because he seems like a right asshole because he's not been there for his kids. His wife was clearly sick. Mm-hmm. And if he didn't know that and she didn't tell him, what the shit, you know? It's all explained. Okay, it's all explained. <laughs> But it's heartbreaking watching mm-hmm. what they go through because they see their friend. Uh, Winry. I, Winry. For some reason, I want to say the win part, but the re at the end, <laughs> I want to say Winifred or something like no, that. Winry. Winry. <laughs> so she's just like a, a friend. She She's not yes, related to the them. The grandmother and Hohenheim have been friends. Okay. So for a just long time. Family so, friends. Yes. <clears throat> so, I mean, when we see that they find out that her parents had died. Obviously that kind of puts a little, you know, nugget in their head where they're just like, Oh shit, I don't want to lose our mom because they love her so much and she adores them. And yes, clearly she has love for her husband because the way kind of what I think Ed was saying, or even Al may have said it was their love for alchemy. She, Mm -hmm was just supportive of it. She loved it. And it almost seemed like it was because he was good at alchemy. She sees that in them. And then that in turn is like her love for him, for them, for what they do. And that they're all, it's all intertwined because of that, that one element. Yes. It's like, she still has a piece of him without actually having him there. Right. And another thing that I, I have to give credit to the show for, because it, it's an easy trope to do, mm-hmm. and I, I think I've, I see it so much in a lot of other shows, and 
it gets tiresome, really mm-hmm. tiresome. But the fact that Al has no hatred toward his brother for what happened, that he's he's like, you know, I was there, I did it, I'm with you. And it's never like, look what you did to me. I will say <laughs> there is a point in time where Ed and Al do fight over something like that. But it's what leads up to it and what another character in the show says to Al is what sets it off. And it's like a heart wrenching thing. Mm-hmm. So you can understand it because I remember witnessing that for the first time and it doesn't happen till much later but i remember witnessing it and just being like no that can't be true like wanting to sob thinking that it was true Mm. but that's the only time that you really see them like they'll have their little squabbles they'll get into fights they won't talk to each other for a little bit like That kind of sibling stuff. Yeah. But the only time you really see them lash out at each other in that sense of it's just that heartbreaking because you know they love each other so much, but uh, it's so heartbreaking. Mm. But when you (laughs) see it, you'll understand where it's coming from. And that's uh, that's, uh, completely different versus where they just say, well, obviously this character is going to be angry, so they're just going to be angry. And then they're just angry and... You can clearly see through a lot of those tropes when they do that with characters because mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, I don't know how you feel about it, but most of the time when a character is angry for no reason and it just seems like it's there to drive the plot yeah. forward because it's like, well, they've got to be angry for a little bit longer. And you're just sitting there thinking, God damn it. You know, just a simple conversation or or anything could clear this up in a minute. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, it's like, well, I'm angry at you. And it's like, well, we don't have time for this right now. We've got to, it's like, no, you just end the shit. Just yeah. be, please be done with it because it just, it drags down a story. It drags down the entire show when someone's just angry. And you can even understand what they're angry about. Mm-hmm. But they they never talk about it. They never put it out front and just deal with it. It's always a let's just avoid it. Let's just avoid it. And it just creates unnecessary conflict for episodes. And it just gets tiresome. Because by the time they finally get it done, it's like, God damn it. Y'all could have had this talk episodes ago. Yeah. And you've drug it out this long. And it made me hate the other character, the one that was angry. Because it was like, why? No. You know? No, I don't feel like you'll ever feel that way about them. And... There's so many episodes where you get to see them when they are truly angry. You know, we've heard them yell and stuff like that, but you get to see them, you know, when they've been pushed past that point. And it's just a beautiful way that everything is written. And like I keep saying, everything is connected. <laughs> and and they they really focused in on their relationship in this episode, too, as, you know, little brothers and it shows mm-hmm. how they could how they would still be in a great relationship over the years it's it, like you said it's so beautifully written and beautifully done that there's never anger between them for just the sake of anger because there was the moment where ed got upset thinking about his dad yeah and he was just like i don't want to be here i don't want to talk about it and he just ran off and then Al follows him and he's just like, well, why are you upset? They have a talk. They have a conversation. And he's not angry at Al for asking. He's just like, you know, I'm I'm upset because the man's not here. And I'm just I'm mad at him for not being here. Yeah. And Al understood. He got it. And there was never, oh, come on, bucko. And and that conflict that could be, it's it's they they make it so relatable in, in a good way. And I appreciate yes. them staying positive with it and not taking the easy route to just everyone's angry all the time yeah and that is one of the things like with ed and al in the relationship with their father al doesn't have a relationship with his father he was a baby when Hohenheim left and edward again barely remembers what he looked like what he sounded like or who he was hmm. he just knew he was a master alchemist you know, everything that you see in the basement was his. 
and he knew that their mother loved him unconditionally. And yep. when you find out their relationship, Trish and Hohenheim, like it is a beautiful love story that's also heartbreaking. Now, speaking of the basement and all the stuff, that's where we see where Al's armor is. Yes. Do they explain where his father got that armor? Because it's just sitting there. I think it was one that his father created. Ah. So for what? Just, <laughs> just created. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't think it's ever like fully explained, but you'll really notice um there's definitely more episodes and especially with uh Winry because <laughs> she's obsessed with metal and tools like she like oh my god geeks out over that kind of stuff like when she was looking at Al mm -hmm. at, well the armor <laughs> she geeks out over it and it's adorable but you'll notice that there's they lean very heavily into that type of stuff you'll right. see other people with auto mail and different types of auto mail and you know you can get like really crappy types or you can get really good types and Winry and her grandmother are kind of those where everybody, you know, shits on them because they're a small town. Like, they're known within the kind of the, uh, I guess, community of automail mechanics. But you'll see more in later episodes where people down Edward's automail. You okay. know, like, ah, oh, how can you fight with that, you know, crappy auto mail and mine's, you know, big and flashy and fancy and raw. <laughs> so auto mail, I'm assuming, is not alchemy related at all. No, they're prosthetics. Any like regular people who cannot use alchemy mm -hmm. can have auto mail, which you'll see them in the show, too. So does that make, is that why... He, Ed gets his nickname, the Full Metal Alchemist, the fact that he has that, but it can use alchemy at the same time. I mean, you can still use alchemy with Automail. It's just his name for the Full Metal Alchemist comes from his ability that he's able to do. Ah. Like, it's kind of a whole thing, but of course, the metal arm and leg kind of go along with it. But you haven't got to see the ability that he has yet. And when they show... A lot of the scenes and stuff when he's doing like the training and everything for the military, you get to see a lot more of what he can do. Mm -hmm. And then as episodes go on, you get to see a lot more of what he can do. And where Alphonse still has to draw circles, obviously Ed doesn't, but, or, tr well, transmutation circles, <laughs> not that he's just drawn circles everywhere. <laughs> but I mean, they, they seem, or at least Ed seems, and I, don't, I mean, I I'm not saying that Al never showed any kind of uh, talent for it, but it, mm -hmm. they seem to be more focused on Edward being the wonderkind, if you will, of alchemy. Like he's just, he's tapped into it. Like he understands it better than anybody ever has. Like he's just got a knack for it. He is his father's son. So, <laughs> and and even what the, the one agent, we finally got to meet, who, who was it? Colonel Mustang. Colonel Mustang. And Colonel Roy Mustang. Oof, I loved him. <laughs> actually seeing him in that one shot, I was like, oh yeah, we did see that guy. <laughs> so I remembered now, but he points out that he was looking for Hohenheim and then mm -hmm. he seemed kind of like, I don't need him anymore now that I have you. That's kind of the, the tone he was kind of laying out. It's like, well, I was looking for him, but now I'm going to talk to you. Yep. And... He he never said he was there to recruit them, did he? But it's almost like he he put like a, a bug in their ear. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of military thing that even, you know, our military does where it's, you know, you know, they get you in with college and, you know, mm -hmm. good money and all this type of stuff. Well, his was, you know, I can help you become stronger so you can achieve your goals type thing. Yeah. Now, I will say, Roy is not a bad guy. He makes questionable decisions. And in his past, he wasn't the best of people, but he's not a villain. <laughs> gotcha. So by the end, we pretty much, and I guess it was clear, but 
when you think about it now, they kind of put it all into perspective. They are still on the same path that they were when we first, when they tried to revive their mom. Yes. I mean, essentially, even going after the Philosopher's Stone, they are trying to still do the same damn thing. So this is their quest. Yes. They want to prove that you can bring humans back through alchemy. Well, theirs isn't so much about proving that you can bring humans back because their goal is not to bring back their mom anymore. It's just to get Alphonse's body back and to get Edward's arm and leg back. Now... They just want to restore what was taken. To be fair, that feels like it's more plausible than bringing a soul back from the dead. I mean, am I wrong? Because they still have Al's soul. Yes. They just need a body. Now, how mm -hmm. that works, I don't know. But it's even, <laughs> But even the arm and the leg, mm -hmm. that feels very more plausible than putting like an entire body. Mm -hmm. because they have the ingredients. They yeah. know the ingredients. Why can't they just bloop? Because equivalent exchange. But the, 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 You saw that it cost Ed, Edward his entire arm from literally his entire shoulders gone. Right, but... Just to bring Al's soul back. But it's just his leg. He's just but what to, are you going to sacrifice to be able to you bring You have it back? all the ingredients. Why does that not? Because it's because matter. Because that's the problem that they had with their mother's remains. You might have all the ingredients, but there's a key missing point. You're not supposed to play God. <sighs> that's why they're looking for the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, but you see, now that's where you get muddy. Because you can't sit there and be like, ah, God, and then put that religious aspect back into it. Because you're talking about flesh and bone. This is full matter. That's what they talk mm -hmm. about in alchemy. As the You have to have an exchange of matter. Yes, if that you is have, Edward's stance on it. If you have the, the, the elements to create a leg, why can't you just create a leg? You're not transferring a soul. You're creating a leg. That's matter versus matter. <laughs> but he wants his arm and leg back. Right. It wouldn't be his arm and leg. He can't get his arm and leg back until something else happens in the show, which gets explained as to where his arm and leg and Alphonse's body is. So you're saying, so, all right, so maybe I'm looking at it through a different lens. Okay. So case in point something that that ed said in the first episode mm -hmm. if i had some grass i could make some bread yes. okay so am i not understanding that by taking the grass he is transmuting it into bread therefore the grass is now bread it'd be i guess a type of bread can't say it would taste too good but... so you're telling me that they couldn't create a leg <laughs> it doesn't have to be his original leg but that can't be transmuted into flesh and bone? I don't think there is... When you see what happens when you transmute... Like, you kind of saw what happened with the mom. Or mm -hmm. what was there. You're going to see more of what happens when people combine things to achieve an effect. <laughs> so... I guess Especially with living tissue. Okay, that's so, the thing. All right, so that that's that's what I wanted to get to. So it's not about the soul. It's about living tissue. It's about flesh. Yes, it's Blood, about like bone. The, yes, because even when it comes, like you kind of see the bird and stuff like that, but like the chimeras, mm -hmm. we saw the chimera, they literally took different animals and transmuted them together to make one animal. Okay. Which is the chimera, which is an abomination. All right. So at least with that understanding, it helps. Because just from what I'm hearing them say about the rules, mm -hmm. and based on the one element that they seem to be stuck on, which is the soul, mm -hmm. it seems to me that that should be possible. But it's the flesh element. It's the human tissue the complicated uh, anatomy of a body. And also the founding law. Think of the founding law, the equivalent exchange, as an eye for an eye. But but again, that's uh, with, with the, the materials. It's it's like uh, forming like the, the metal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you have to take all these elements, you have to pound them together, and you have a chemical composition that creates a, a metal. 
Mm -hmm. So how is that not uh, uh, equal transfer? But if you also look at all the stuff that they create with alchemy, it's not perfect. Like if you see, like even going back to the first episode where he transmuted the statue to look like Alphonse. If you look at Al, he's shiny. You know, he's smooth. If you look at that statue, you see like the little pieces where it almost looks like the metal is coming off of him. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect. You look at the trinkets they made. They're not perfect. Even the doll's hair wasn't perfect. So to transmute something that would be flesh and blood and bone and everything else, it wouldn't be perfect. <laughs> okay. So I'm even going to take this a step further as to try and understanding this. The Fly, Jeff Goldblum mm -hmm. movie. So where he was trying to understand transport or trying to create a teleportation device. Mm -hmm. And he failed numerous times because the machine did not understand how to destroy human tissue and recompose it into another pod. It was like it just didn't get it. Yeah. So that's essentially, in some aspects, the magic or I don't even know, the science of alchemy. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Like it just doesn't understand the more complex compositions of human anatomy, all the other details. Because if you think about it, there are a lot of details. I mean, we're not just talking about bone. We're talking about flesh. We're talking about blood. We're talking about blood cells, veins. There's so many elements that go into play mm -hmm. that even if you had the chemical compositions to create it, there are other factors that maybe are not understood well enough to do it properly yes and i will say the seven deadly sins do not live up to the can't regenerate shit <laughs> okay there is i mean one in particular who can literally regenerate from like basically a damn skeleton and even lust is one of those that can regenerate like she's been burned and it can grow back mm -hmm. but they are also you'll find out what they are as you go. Okay. This gave me a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And like this discussion, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it through a very scientific lens and I'm trying to understand certain elements of alchemy. And I understand that alchemy is not necessarily in this regard. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, I don't want to say it's not real. What's the, it's not like this, not the way they're portraying it. Yes. Because alchemy is a thing, but it's not this type of alchemy per yes. se. You know, this comes off a like a little bit more magical in its essence of how they portray it. Think of it like his dark material. The okay. difference between dust and dark matter. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's the scientific element that I'm kind of hanging on to because here lately I've, I've been... With my job, I don't want to go into great detail, but I have to look at chemical compositions and things and, and I have to see, and I've never really thought about it, you know, but even like today, I was just kind of looking over it and I noticed variables Yeah. and it was just weird, you know, like there are two types of metals that are named very similarly, yeah. but they're just off by, you know, a, a number mm -hmm. or two numbers and... The chemical compositions are almost identical, save for two specific chemicals. They invert. So you're not looking for one chemical in one type of metal. You're looking for this metal or this element in this structure. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was kind of interesting because it was like, okay, so that's the difference between this and that. It's this element. that There's more of that or it's, it's more prominent. And... I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at it through that lens when yeah. I'm asking all these questions about getting a leg back. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to be contrary. I'm just, I'm asking questions because. I mean, it's a good question. It is a good question, but you'll find out again, there's another person you're going to meet who is kind of in the same boat and what was taken from that person. Like, that's one of the things like, you know, you can't get that back, but mm -hmm. no, you can't. Like once it's gone, it's gone. 
<clears throat> okay, fair enough. I'll I'll let it slide for now, and they'll explain more of their stuff. Yes, their they science. will explain much, much more. But no, it was a good episode. I'm glad that they did that up front because I didn't want to wait to find out about their mom. We we've already gotten that sliver. Yeah. You know, so it was just like, just go ahead and tell us, please. Yeah. <laughs> and they did, and they're doing. So I I appreciate the structure of this series thus far, and. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a little fascinated thinking about brotherhood now because of what I've heard, what you've told me yeah. that it just zooms past, and I was like, what, <laughs> "How are you going to zoom past all this? This is good stuff." Yeah. So I mean, it's, it fleshes it out. It's a, it's good, solid storytelling thus far. Now, again, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But mm-hmm. it's just from my stance, I feel like this is doing a great job at telling a story and doing it well. So. That's just my opinion. Alrighty. Well, I guess we will get ready to jump into episode four. Stephen, take it away. Well, tell everybody to go find us on their favorite podcasting platform. You can chuck in a buck over there at patreon.com slash pencil paper productions. Help this show and others like it grow. Uh, if you just want to keep up with the show easily, you can go to pencilpaperproductions.com slash inspiredweeaboo, and you can always keep up with the latest episodes, and maybe we'll get on social medias and all that stuff in due time, and please pay attention if you listen on Spotify, check and see if there's a question or a poll or anything, and, and answer those, and we'll try to get to them when I see them, because I never, I don't get notifications when people answer the polls, it's, it's <laughs> frustrating, I don't understand why. But we will try. If you do answer, we will respond. And we'll even shout your name out. You know, how awesome is that? And we'll be like, you are awesome, whatever your name is, because we don't know who you are because <laughs> you didn't answer yet. But uh, do that and and tell everybody to, to listen to the show if they love this. And hashtag say full metal. <laughs> All right, my little weebs. Until next time. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.